Pokemon Facts Bonsleys look like the sort of succulents that one would gift another person as a housewarming present. And pseudo-widows look like giant twigs with green softballs for hands. Like Edward Scissorhand if he was a Christmas tree. Looking at these creatures, one would assume that they're grass-type Pokemon, but they're actually rock types. In the wild, pseudo-widows use their unique feature to blend into the forest to survive. They also use their appearance to attract bug-type Pokemon like Caterpies and Wormpulls for sustenance. At a glance, they don't look all that convincing as trees, but it's enough to fool their peers. Most humans immediately recognize their signature smile and avoid chopping them for wood, not because we care about their well-being, but because we don't want to damage our axes. After all, they are rock types. Their deception worked well enough, for the most part. Sadly, their adaptation didn't take into account the territorial nature of certain types of Pokemon. Despite disguising themselves to blend in with nature, pseudo-widows have become indirect victims of Arcanines, Mightyanas, Lycanrocs, Houndooms, and Luxrays. These Pokemon wander around the woods in packs and mark their territory with PP. The scent of PP helps them recognize which area is under their control and serves as a warning to all those who dare step foot in them. As you can probably guess, pseudo-widows are constantly getting sprayed on with PP while they blend in with nature. The humiliation alone is hard to live down, but what's even harder to live down is death, because they're weak to water. Every year, thousands of Sudowoodos lose their lives to Pokemon marking their territory all over them. If they try to dodge the PP, they immediately get spotted and hunted down because they love using Sudowoodos to sharpen their fangs and claws, which often left them tattered and mostly dead. So it's either get mauled or get sprayed on and neither is ideal. But at least getting marked on at a higher chance of survival. Exposure to water make them weak, but depending on the amount, the velocity, and the length of exposure, the pseudobodos can recover without much residual effects. Unless you count immense shame and trauma tied with being hosed down by Pokemon wieners as residual effects. One time, they wore raincoats. It didn't work out. Arcanines immediately became suspicious, burned away their polyester apparel and chased them down so their teething infants could use them to ease their pain. They tried using transparent latex to protect themselves from PP, but the extra layer made it difficult for them to attract bug-type Pokemon, which are their main source of food. It's unfortunate, but they had to face facts. There was nothing they could do to shield themselves from the P. It was either adapt or perish, so they embraced it, learned to enjoy it. Love it. Drew targets on their foreheads and begged for it. And they made it really weird for everyone else who stopped marking their territories as much because a bunch of fake trees kept demanding to be sprayed on. Many pseudo-widows tragically died during this period, but their noble sacrifices made it possible for the rest of them to continue living. I'm your dad's secret sim card and this has been another episode of Pokemon Facts. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more factual Pokemon Facts. Have a wonderful Pokemon day.